Well, hello again and happy new year. It's now 1st of January 2022 and I just wanted to do a bit of a wrap-up video of last year and some predictions for this year. This channel has gained quite a lot of new subscribers lately, so I hope now everybody can get a bit of a hang what's going on here. For many of us, last couple of years have been very challenging. Fortunately, I've been able to do work at the office and here in my home office as well and hadn't had that much of a need to travel around. That said, this has been other kinds of challenges like a small burnout I had last spring. That kind of still affects of this project finances bit by bit of delaying them. But lesson learned there, you just have to find your limit and I hope I'm a bit wiser in that matter, although I have this a big project ahead. So a little bit of a background, my name is Panu, I'm an architect living here in Finland. I've always been fascinated about sailboats for some reason, but until about 2015 I got actually visit one and sail one and that was kind of a <laughs> love at the first sight. After that I really got into sailing and took some courses and sailing and every opportunity. Now I'm actually a qualified sailor and skipper. It's funny to say that aloud. Sounds nice. And I got even done the celestial navigation during last winter. About the time when I got into sailing, I realized that this was kind of thing I wanted to do in the future. And shortly after, I decided I want to build my own boat. Any of those ready-to-go boats were not that kind of vessels I would like to have. They just didn't have that something. Then the first video I did on YouTube was kind of a dream said out loud. After that, it has been a kind of a slow process of adjusting the circumstances to make this all possible. And finally, about a year ago on fall 2020, pieces just started to find their places. And then I made a contract with Tantun Yacht Designs to design this boat. Before that I had a pretty good idea what features what would I want into my dream boat. But the design work really started after we decided what kind of hull shape we would go. The shape of the hull is obviously the most important feature of the boat. It will determine the displacement, as called as the weight of the boat, and how it performs in water. And it's always a compromise of different features. The starting point was Mr. Tantun's design from the 90s called Millennium Falcon which is a pretty cool name, I think. It's a 50 meter one-off designed steel hulled and composite deck cruising sailboat that has catcatch rig. This particular boat has been traveling around the world ever since, so it should be pretty good boat design for liveaboard. The hull shape of it was uh, modified a little bit to be built from wood epoxy, and at the same time it was modernized a bit uh, with slightly wider hull and a little shallower draft and with double keels. You can check more of the, the feature of the boat and the design part uh, from these two or three videos up there. Remember to check the QA video as well, there's plenty of stuff in there as well. But as for last year, the boat plans has gone forward bit by bit and uh, right now, exactly right now, I'm doing the actual structural 3D model of the boat hull. I hope within a couple of months we are actually starting to cut the parts for the hull. And that's really exciting for me. And by cutting I refer to this amazing a big DIY CNC router that I built last year. It has been a big effort for me. I designed and built it by myself. Oh, well, I did use professional dues to make the parts, but the design is all my own. The build of the CNC router started about a year ago in December 2020 and continued most of the last winter. And now the machine is almost complete. I'm currently doing the final tweaks on it and video about that should come out in a few weeks. So remember to subscribe if you haven't done that already. To get notified of things. But after all the biggest thing was to get the boat workshop build started last year. In my original schedule was that I should have started the build last 
spring. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. The difficult part appeared to be the site for the shed. And I really started looking one uh, over a year ago with no luck. At late summer, I decided to expand my search area a bit. And finally, I got lucky. Now the distance to the workshop from where I live is uh, a bit longer than I would hope. But, uh, well, it's now coming and that's the main thing. Right now the workshop frame is under construction, <laughs> not without the drama. On the next video will be the process of getting that shed frame up, so stay tuned for that. And push the subscribe button already, please. Thank you. But okay, so last year, 2021, the project really started with the boat plans and with the CNC router and with the boat shed. Let's now take a look what to expect from this year. First thing, of course, is to get the boat workshop ready. You can check a little bit more detailed plans from this video up there. That's the section where I explain what's to become. But in budget-wise, there is really three major things to come for the workshop. First one is the insulation layer that's going to build inside of that tent shed. It's another big job, but this time it's going to be inside the tent and uh, without any rain and wind issues. The second big expense is the electricity connection for the shed and the main breakout board for that. And third is the heat pump device for heating the place. And all of these will be several thousand euros each. So there will be a few months and at least so I can afford them. As I mentioned, the CNC router is now almost complete. And some of you may know that it is now temporarily located at my father-in-law's place. It's a big long trip there from where I live, but I try to get there as often as possible for this couple of months. Now, when I believe that I can get the CNC up and running soon, I can then start making the first parts for the frames and molds for the boat. We will return on to these boat construction plans in many videos uh, this year, I believe. But uh, let's take a little sneak peek on it right now. So I've been building now the 3D model of this entire structural part of the boat and at the same time trying to figure out how to build it efficiently. There's uh, still a few things I have to discuss with Mr. Tanton to make things right. Like uh, how to combine the structures with uh, floors and frames and the placement of the keels and stuff like that. So pretty major actually. And I really try to optimize things in a way that there is as much as possible of the structural parts in the boat before planking. Because after that it's a bit uh, difficult to access things when the boat is upside down and uh, you have to turn it around and then it's a little bit, yeah, you know the drill. The model is not ready yet, obviously, but um, if we check out here a bit, uh, there is these frames already modeled. There is this bulwark sheet going. This, is, this will be against the floor, so that boat will be built right on the floor by this bulwark here. It should be easy to cut with the CNC. Then there is keel and the bow section here. And then there is these floor structures modeled here as well. Actually, the structure of the boat isn't that complicated, but the boat interior actually is quite complicated. And uh, if I put the floors or soles in boat language, you can probably see that there is quite many levels on the soles here. So if there's the forward cabin, the main cabin here and the deck saloon and seats and all kinds of stuff going on here. And uh, when I put these structures under here, I had to adjust the heights a bit and then I really need to raise the roof as well to gain this full standing height all the way to the bow. So there is this kind of weeks I have to do now when I'm making the actual structures. Uh, but I really try to tackle all of them through this 3D model so I don't have to figure out things when I'm actually building them. 
So all of these parts should, should be quite easily cut with the CNC router and then trimmed with the actual shape of the hull. So that said, I hope I can get soon started with the structures of the boat, which is really exciting. There is although some supplies needed for them, obviously, <laughs> mostly quality timber and plywood, which are not necessarily that easy to find, especially the quality timber. I try not to use any tropical hardwood on this boat, but only locally sourced Nordic spruce, pine and stuff like that, Pro possibly some oak or maple. Nordic birch would be a great timber for woodworking, but it's not really good for boat building because it doesn't stand water at all. The structural parts will be mostly pine, I think. However, before making any decisions of the timber, I want to make some tests. And for that reason, I already purchased some epoxy, which are in this box, and also a bunch of different kind of fiberglass gloats, which are in this bag. I won't open them right now. I really haven't used epoxy in this form before, and I really need to learn stuff before I can confidently use epoxy lamination in ocean-going vessel structures. And I also want to familiarize myself with different kind of fiberglass clothes and how to handle them. What I'm a bit concerned is a way to mix these amounts of epoxy efficiently during this project with uh, hardeners and fillers and stuff. I really wouldn't like to mix hundreds of kilos of epoxy by hand. So far I haven't really found any epoxy mixing machinery. If you have any tips of this matter, please put your comments down below. I will check them out. But we will get back to these epoxies and fiberglass things soon enough, I believe. So the boat plans is coming. Uh, I will start the structural work soon and seek for supplies. And the CNC machine is coming along. Uh, let's now check the schedule and that should interest me and many of you, I hope. I've been keeping this Trello schedule very rough one for kind of uh, visualizing what's going on in here. The link to this schedule will be on every video's description. You can check it out whenever you want. The ultimate goal here is to splash the boat by the early summer 2025, which is actually only three years from now. Uh, <laughs> however, the goal has been set already years ago and the start of the project has gone forward at least a couple of times ever since. So not really that serious about that. Anyway, if you concentrate on this year, there is a goal to finish the hull by the end of October. That is ambitious, I know. I need to make quite a bit more detailed plans to really achieve this, but making most of the lofting and that kind of time-consuming measuring work with computer and with that CNC should speed the build process tremendously compared to the traditional approach. And after all, there is not that many parts on that hull structure. The biggest job, of course, will be the planking and fairing the hull. However, I would really like to do as much of the interior parts before planking the hull. So this goal of making the hull ready may be postponed in the future because we're actually starting to do the interior work before the planking. And uh, as a bit of a nerdy little technical aspect, I'm trying to do this quite detailed part list called Product Breakdown System on Google Sheets, hoping it helps me to manage all the parts needed and uh, their phases and stuff like that. You can check the early version of that uh, in the link down in the description. The overall goal of this year anyway would be to get the hull finished in the stage that it can be turned around before winter comes in December. And we will see how that goes. 
It's really ambitious, I know, but let's try to do that together, I hope. And after all, it all comes to the fact that how much time I can put into this project. Which brings us to these videos. I work almost full time in my own one-man architectural office company. And it's currently the only way I'm financing this project. I don't have any initial savings to put in and I'm kind of going from hand to mouth. So these videos are really kind of a side hobby for me. So all the time I'm getting off from my work is going to be off from the finances of the project. But of course this is just that much more fun than the real work. So I'm kind of balancing between these two all the time. What I hope that making these videos would eventually allow me to spend more time with this project and also make the actual videos better. As we speak, there is already small revenue coming from these videos and Patreon and stuff. Thank you so much. That isn't much, but it, it really helps already. Right now, actually, I don't have any decent camera to use. I'm just loaning my wife's iPhone right here. But I already ordered one. Too bad there is a quite a bit of delay caused by this uh, chip shortage going on. And I, I have no idea when the camera will arrive. But by making these videos and having all this amazing support from you guys, it has had an unexpected side effect. It has given a huge pile of confidence and motivation to continue with this project. And I'm really thankful of that already. As for this content, there is a really couple of things. Uh, I would like to make this kind of a story of a build this thing, but there's also possibility to do kind of a how-to videos from different aspects of the project, and which could be a good content for a long term. There may be a room for both of these, but uh, let me know what you think in, in the comments section. As for the future of these videos, I have already a bunch of ideas how to equip the workshop with uh, some better video equipment. There will be multiple cameras and microphones and stuff and lights, of course, to make the videos look and sound good. And also to make the streamlined process of editing these, because it is quite a big of a job to make a good story edit thing from all this footage I take when I'm doing something. But I also plan to build a DIY spider cam on that workshop, so stay tuned for that. That would be really awesome to get moving time lapses and uh, kind of detailed shots from different angles. There is a lot to learn of this video editing. I'm a no means expert of that, as you may see from the quality of this video as well. Which brings this to this channel and you guys. I've gained over 2000 subscribers already and number is rising steadily every week. So thank you very much. What will make it possible to make more content for you guys is the contribution of you guys. Of course, watching these videos is the first step you can do. The second one is, of course, like the videos and subscribe to the channel and making comments. It helps other people to find them and the YouTube algorithm the work. And the final, the ultimate thing is to support the channel from Patreon. It uh, just takes a couple of bucks a piece, so there is options for everyone, I think. In long run, that will make a huge difference for my possibilities to make and edit these videos. And hopefully it helps the finances of this project as well. I'm not counting on that, that you guys will finance my boat. No, that's not the reason at all. I know there's a great community around bolt building around the world. There's a quite a few interesting projects going on. And I myself support a few of them as well. And I'm really, really thrilled to become one of these channels in that community. But there is still a long way ahead and I believe we can make it there. So far I haven't had a fixed schedule to publish these videos, just due to the lack of a decent content to publish. But I hope now on, from starting from this video, I will do video every other week when the project really starts rolling. The constant pace of publishing videos should help the channel grow as well. And uh, that's about it for this video. I 
hope this gave a little bit of an insight what's going on in here and gave you something to expect. You can imagine I'm really thrilled right now and I just hope I can keep it all together. With that you can really help. So subscribe to the channel, give me a like, check the previous videos as well, even though they're maybe not that quality content you would expect. Go to check my Patreon page and uh, purchase this great shirt. Oh, this is not my shirt. Let's get this project really flying. No, sailing. So have a great new year and we'll see you soon. Bye.